Testing. Okay, great. I was having some trouble with my sound earlier. I started this video and it didn't quite work. Okay, this is episode 20, World of Ember. This is going to be by far my most off-the-cuff video, so I don't know if we're ever going to do this again, but we're looking at the global configuration here, and I'm starting to realize that there are some uh, real problems. So... First of all, this uh, this shape, if it's a globe, then the the flat map ought to look twice as wide as it is tall. And so, and we've kind of corrected for that a little bit here and here, but let's uh let's go ahead and uh adjust the canvas size here. We're going to we're going to call this uh <coughs> 1450 and that should take care of the upper blank spot there and then we'll do this so that it's uh it's twice the size yes yes uh yes yeah, some clipping will occur okay great let's shrink this a little bit uh too far okay that's just about right that about fills up the screen so that's where we want to be uh let me come down uh, to the background copy and I'm just going to make that fit the new canvas just so that we have we, we can maintain the look all right uh, we talked about this problem here with Nemus what I'm gonna do I think is take this coastline uh, and I guess take all the names as well with it and uh, which way do we want to go? Let's just move it over like, well, yeah, let's move it over like this. You know what, before I do that, let me grab this. Okay, now we can move everything over. Okay. Yes. Okay, I thought I was copying something, but apparently I did not. It's always embarrassing in a in a live tutorial. Oh well, whatever. It's not really a tutorial, is it? Nimus, I you're a problem. You know what though, I do want to change the shape a little bit because we talked about this thing having ribbed mountains running through it, and so I think what I want to do is kind of give it this shape okay maybe like the the, the ribs are kind of coming out to the edge of the sea there and you can see where they stick out a little bit kind of interesting uh, a lot bigger than it used to be but that's okay we'll give it a weird uh, weird coastline we'll fix that later <coughs> Okay, uh, I guess the other thing to think about then, let me center, oh, not you, you can just go away. Nimus, okay, put you down here. Huh, let's see, I originally called you Nimus from Animus because you looked like a puppy head, <laughs> and now you don't. Well, whatever, origins of words, right? If we do that, do we want to spread any of these things out? I don't want to spread any of these three out. That guy's good relation, and this guy... See, this area right here, just that's the closest the three continents come together, and so that would be a, a big trading hub, I think. Okay, let me go to this. If I'm looking at the, our world, and you can see the climate zones, right? So polar and subpolar you have your temperate and your and subtropical and tropical and man I gotta say I really I don't want this to be like a hot world I know it's a world of ember but maybe it's far away from the sun or or something like that and so most of the heat is actually produced from the world itself which is why recharging it's so important so uh, a couple of things that I want to do first Make a new layer here and call it uh, currents. All right, so the 
the currents themselves uh, what color do we want to make these currents let's make them a very fascinating blue given that they're oh, they're water okay so um, make this a little bit bigger so let's let's have a current that comes through here okay and then uh, let's go this way okay and I think, so what we're doing with currents, currents are important because, okay, if I come back up here, you'll notice that uh, people are often surprised to find out that Madrid and like New York City are about on the same latitude here. And the reason that this area is so much warmer is because the, the what's this called, the, the transatlantic current actually comes up where it's hot right through here and then switches over, warms up Europe, and that's why all of these areas, okay, where on the... American continent, these are, you know, polar and subpolar, they're livable, they're, they're uh, livable areas up here, so that's all due to this current, and you can see the current causing effects all around the globe, so what are we doing here, well we know that we said this area was hot, this was a tropical area here, and since it's a little south of the equator, maybe we can get away with saying uh, it's warm because it's got this, this uh, current coming in and it's keeping it warm we can go ahead and say uh, maybe we got a current coming up like this I guess it would come around and so what it's doing now is bringing warm water from this area up into here and that would keep this area warm okay but now that has cooled off and so you come up it gets cold and it starts coming down and so this area down here it would be like California where it's a warm climate but the water is very cold Okay, so that would be this area, and it would keep things a little bit more temperate. Let's see, if we say, if we say, uh, let's see, so we're, so we're mostly we're swirling this way, we're swirling like this, and so again we have the hot water coming down, and so that would make kind of this coast more livable. These islands, even though they're kind of south, you know, I want to do something with them, like, if you're from that island, you're from the seventh continent, but if you're from anywhere else, it's just some island in the middle of the <laughs> of the ocean. Just you know, we like conflict. Uh, and and if that's the case, then then these uh, co uh, currents up here would be going up and around. And what that's doing is making this area warm, but then it's grabbing the cold and making this water down here cold. And then it would also well, I don't think that's right. I think that it would have to it would have to do something like this because this is a current actually coming out and coming out because we have the sharp right in here. Okay, and then if we're if we're doing all that, uh, we're we're kind of keeping this uh, counterclockwise thing going. So cold water coming up, and then another current like this. So this coast is going to be pretty cold. Okay. That's that. All right, then let's do our climates. And and another map that I found that was kind of interesting is this one here where you can see it's not climate zones, but it's more like uh, what areas have what kind of temperatures. And you can see how this is very cold, and then, you know, you have this hot India, and then the cold Antarctica, or not Antarctica, the cold Himalayas, uh, right, almost right next to each other, and that's interesting. And we do have that kind of thing here. So I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to call it. Uh, the other one was currents. This is just called uh, climate. Okay, with climate, we are saying. Let's see. I'm going to. I hid this layer just because this had my colors. What are you doing? Yes, I know how to operate Photoshop. Stop <coughs> second-guessing me. All right, so climate, we're going to say... Um, I'll have to make this bigger. Too big? Yeah, we'll see. We are saying polar zones, okay. And, and I'm going to actually reduce the... Okay, so polar zones, obviously, right across the top and across the bottom. 
Uh, we, I, I kind of want this chunk over here to be livable because that's interesting. And we're bringing cold up so we can go ahead and make more of Zaradan cold. And then we'll do something interesting along here. <sighs> okay. Off the cuff, like I said. Let's go ahead and take this color now. And this is our... Okay, so kind of what we were seeing with on Earth with the Himalayas. Okay, this area of Simona is going to be cold. Let's see, this coming up. Okay, so this is the glacier water coming down, and this is coming down. So we're going to... We, I wanted this, at least the top half of of this area, of this uh, Athelian Sea here, to be cold. And then we have Raffi living over here, so that needs to be pretty cold. Now we can say maybe this side is cold, but since we're bringing warm water up, we're going to make that um, more temperate over here. And then this is very far north. Well, let's see. It's temperate, but it's not, it's not Arctic, so... So this is far north, and so we're going to say it's livable, but it's not, um, it's livable because of these temperatures. So it's like Scandinavia. It's livable because of this warm water coming up, but it's not actually, uh, you know, temperate. It's not super pleasant. Okay, and then obviously this is going to be cold going up. Let's see, because of this, the tip here, we're going to pretend like we think that's temperate. And, again, it's, it's the warm water cold up here so let's go ahead and say relatively cold through here and then on the south obviously we're gonna be we're gonna be cold here and and we're gonna be cold going up for a bit let's just say cold down here this is warm it, it the warm uh, water is coming down so we're gonna keep these in a temperate zone that's gonna be cold and uh, if I make you disappear, then we can say that you guys are cold as well and bring that up a little bit north. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, turn you back on and grab our temperate color. Okay, so we've got this area here that's temperate. That's fine. It's going to be temperate through here. I don't love <laughs> tropical. I'm a cold-blooded person, but... And, and so my, my tendency is to make the tropical zone as narrow a band as possible, but obviously if you're looking at one of these maps, the tropical zone is huge, and then there's a, a subtropical zone on either side of it, so I'm being unrealistic, but that's okay. Uh, this isn't Earth. This is a different world and so we're maybe we're saying uh for whatever reason it's a it's a colder planet that's okay okay so we're temperate through here oh oh all right temperate through here we want to give the raffi plenty of space to live the sharp which is about here was located in a temperate zone so we want to make sure that that is we're being true to that Okay, this area here is going to be temperate. And we've got the warm water coming up, so maybe... Yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Then here, we want this to be relatively temperate. These guys can be temperate. You know, temperate, if, if that's not familiar. You know, the four seasons... You know, pretty... Uh, I guess pretty basic. <sighs> okay, then now I'm going to grab this yellow, and here are... No, I'm not ready to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see, you need to be... Let's see, we've got the cold water coming up, and I guess warm water shooting... Ooh, shooting up through here. I'm going to bring this down a bit. Uh, 
Okay, what, I like my seasons. Okay, now we're going to come back over here and fill in the rest of it. This is the tropical zone. So Nimbus kind of spans quite a bit. Simona obviously is up and down, so it spans quite a bit. And so this would be, you know, this area here would be kind of what we were seeing uh, with with uh, India and then the Himalayas. And that's exactly what we have in mind, right? So this area is warm. These islands are supposed to be pretty hot. And then you got the big high mountains right behind that. So that's uh, that produces an ecologically interesting area. So this is the lava uh, island, if you remember that. So it's okay to make that hot. Think of it as, as a, a really freaky Hawaii. Here's Here's this area. Here's this area. I haven't... Other than Nemesis, none of these others, I, I really feel like I wanted to change the shape. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. So I've kind of left them. <sighs> and then the big sea area. Because we have smaller continents, but they're kind of taking... There's more of them, so they take up a lot of space. So what this area right here would be a pretty big sea area. This area... And then, uh, I don't know. We're, we're pretty chuck full, actually. Good enough. <sighs> okay, so that's our world. That is, uh, so we can see, <sighs> I guess it's important to understand how the currents are working in the oceans. It's important to understand how that affects the climates. And if this is too unrealistic and, and you know better than me, then please let me know. Otherwise, uh, the only other thing that I don't want to say it at this point is to say that this uh, world wasn't, like the continents aren't the result of tectonic action. Because the world is more like uh, arising from the magma ocean underneath it as it cools and forms the crust. You get these different uh, light, high, high spots and low spots, right? And so that's what's creating these continents. So, in other words, they don't need to fit together, right? The way that Earth's continents were once Pangaea and broke up, so they fit together in a way. We aren't doing that because they have arisen from a from a different... Uh, there, there's a different excuse <laughs> for them. Okay, that's our world. Let me know where I'm wrong. Let me know how I could do this better. Thank you for dealing with the unedited, off-the-cuff version of Jake talking, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.